Hi, this is Mitch Doan, and along with Jamie Richardson, we're your hosts of the Breakthrough Active Podcast. We aim to deep dive into health and fitness that will help bring you a better understanding of topics that are of interest to you and can help you on your own journey. If you are enjoying the episodes, we'd love for you to leave us a rating on the platform you listen to your podcasts. Enough from me, sit back, relax, and enjoy the episode. Hello and welcome back again to the Breakthrough Active Podcast. My name is Mitch, I am your host, and I have a little bit of a controversial topic today, uh, but I am not going to be too controversial because I am always one to try to keep an open mind about everything. Um, I research before I talk about anything um, that may have two sides to it. I have a lot of experience with working with people over the years within health and fitness. So as it relates to today's topic, uh, although it isn't something that I follow, I do have a lot of respect um, and admiration for people who do it for various reasons, which I am going to discuss. So today's topic is what it means to be a vegetarian and my views uh, on vegetarianism and those who choose to uh, pursue that approach to their nutrition. So um, although I feel like everyone would know, um, just to quickly rehash, vegetarian is someone who doesn't eat um, animals. Very different to vegans, where that is, or not very different, but slightly different to vegans, where they are people who don't eat animal products. So that extends to other things that uh, derive from animals, but vegetarians are just people who don't eat animals in general. So I think it's really important uh, to start this conversation um, to put my views forward because I don't want to feel as though there's any bias, but I am not vegetarian. I have never um, chosen to pursue a vegetarian diet or approach. But like I mentioned earlier, have had a lot of conversations and, and worked uh, within the nutrition realm with a lot of people over the years who do. So I feel like I have um, a good viewpoint on this because there have been a lot of different people who I have spoken to who have given me lots of different reasons and insights as to why they choose to be a vegetarian. And I just think it would be really interesting to discuss some of these because I think uh, occasionally people can can believe that there is uh, only sort of one side to, uh, to this argument uh, or two sides to it and you need to be either one or the other. But in my case... And as I am with most most things health and fitness related, I keep a very open mind and this is no different. So what I have noticed over the years is most people, nearly, nearly all of them, who choose to uh, be a vegetarian is for ethical reasons. So they feel as though that they do not want to be uh, in support of uh, how it comes around that animals are, are killed for us to eat and they just don't want to be a part of that uh, so for ethical reasons, they, they choose to, to pursue a different approach to, to their nutrition. Uh, and then also normally accompanied by this is people that just don't really feel like they need meat in their life. They could take it or they could leave it. Uh, and then once you know they sort of get a few, uh, few thoughts in there around the ethics around it, they, are much, uh, they would much prefer to leave it as opposed to taking it. So... Normally a combination of both. Sometimes there are, you know, other reasons, medical-based things, uh, bad experiences that they've had with meat. Um, they've gotten sick of, of meat products. Uh, it just doesn't really agree with their body. But normally, it, in my experience at least, it comes down to ethical re reasons and then also just their inclinations to, to even want to eat meat and if they don't really feel like they enjoy it or need it too much and they just choose to go without it. Um, so with that being said, I, I think it's really important to, for, for me to, to state that I, I really do believe that people just should do what makes them happy. I know that's a bit of a, uh, a bit of a response that you know is very, very grey, but I, I really do believe it, and, and I don't think that anybody has the right to be able to, to pass judgment or critique or you know make fun of or you know try to talk someone out of something that they really. Uh, love doing or something that makes them happy and this is one of the things that does cop quite a bit of flack you know sometimes it is tongue-in-cheek tongue but 
you know, people can be made fun of with veg- as being a vegetarian and, and sort of mocked a little bit for it at times. Uh, but, you know, I, I really do believe if it's something that makes you happy, if it's something that you agree with and something that you support, then you should do it. It doesn't hurt anybody else. Um, it's just yourself and the way that you feed yourself and it really doesn't have any bearing on, on anyone else. Um, unless it is obviously like, you know, family, close family, and then you're changing the way they eat and things like that. But, but other than that, if it's just you feeding yourself, you know, it doesn't really matter to your friends or anyone else what, what it is that you have. So I just wanted to, to get that one out of the way. And if it makes you happy that you are a vegetarian and if you are someone who likes to do that, then, then you should go for it because no one should be able to tell you otherwise. So that that's my, my opinion on that. But as it relates to, I guess, the, the scientific and the approach to and the nuts and bolts of it as it relates to health and fitness, you know, there are there is a little bit more discussion, um, I think, that needs to be had there. Uh, the first one which I wanted to, to talk about is being a vegetarian doesn't necessarily mean you're healthy. And and I think for people who maybe are a little more uneducated, they hear the word vegetarian, obviously from that they get vegetable. We know people who eat vegetables are healthy and vegetables are healthy. So they think if someone is a vegetarian, they're healthy. Uh, doesn't always have that uh, that strong correlation because when you think about it, a lot of the foods that we do actually overindulge in of foods that are quote unquote vegetarian anyway. You think about ice cream, you think about chocolate, you think about chips, you think about alcohol. You know, all of these things are foods that aren't meat. So we, we do have a habit of, of overeating some of these things, which can lead to you know, other parts of our health being not as good as we, we would like. Uh, putting on weight, and, and sort of that, that whole realm which comes with obesity and, and being overweight. But just because you are a vegetarian doesn't mean you're healthy. Now, there are a lot of vegetarians who, who are very healthy, except just automatically considering that someone is a vegetarian doesn't mean that they are healthy as a product of that. So I think that was important uh, for me to discuss and distinguish because there is still so many unhealthy foods that we can eat in excess uh, if we are vegetarian and we choose just to eat uh, perhaps sometimes more of those other foods that uh, aren't meat obviously and if we do so then you know perhaps we are going down that road of being a little bit more unhealthy than if we did have a full balanced diet. Uh, the, the other challenge which which is uh, there's no two ways around it is it is harder to get protein in when you aren't uh, eating meat uh, because it is our main source of protein. So again, it, it doesn't mean that it's impossible to get your, your daily recommend, re- recommended amount of protein, but it is going to make it more challenging because it is the primary source in which we do so. Um, you know, the, the meats and, and everything where we, we do get our protein makes up the majority of our protein for most people. And then obviously for people who are vegetarian, they're finding alternatives like tofu and other uh, meat replacements as well as um, eggs and dairy and, and other things as well which uh, which are richer in protein but there is no doubt that it is you know a little bit more of a challenge uh, for those who are going without meat to be able to eat enough of it and and with um, with my conversations with people over the years it, it, it does quite often come back to this where they especially when they are working out and they feel as though they are needing an, a good amount of protein each day they find that it is a little bit more difficult to get enough in so much of our conversation is talking about alternatives talking about other ways that you can get in protein uh, and sometimes that comes through supplements and, and other things but you know a big big part of that is ensuring that we get enough of that um, but just to, to sort of bring it all together, because I am going to be doing a few more um, discussions about this in the uh, in the coming coming weeks, I, I feel as though that it, it is really important that uh, that everybody does have obviously a choice to to eat what they want, uh, and in this conversation is more based around those that are wanting to be healthy. Maybe they're wanting to lose weight. Maybe they're wanting to in, improve muscle tone. Maybe they're looking to, to improve some of their other health markers. Maybe they're looking to improve their performance and, and get fitter. And, and that's where you know the conversations I have with people are more based around that aspect of things. So I have noticed that there are some challenges associated with it. 
Uh, but one thing I feel like it is a really, really big plus for it is it does encourage people to eat lots of fruit and lots of veg. Now that might seem very obvious because of the word vegetarian, but if you there is if you if you aren't a vegetarian, I feel like that you do not prioritize these things as much. And if you are, I feel like your priorities do lay within trying to get lots of fruit and veg, which, which is always going to be positive. Get lots more vitamins, lots more minerals um, out of those vegetables and those who don't. Obviously, there is a bit of an argument that a lot of the vitamins and minerals that we do need comes from meat. Um, and in particular, red meat is quite rich in it. So that's where there can be a bit of a shortcoming there. But if people do base their their diets and their nutrition on fruit and veg, they're going to be in pretty good stead. Uh, like I mentioned earlier, there is often a case that people can overindulge on some of those things that aren't um, that aren't great for them and are vegetarian items because they're chips and chocolates and, and ice cream and things like that. But in the most part, if we are building our pyramid uh, nutrition-wise and, and fruit and veggies at the bottom, we're going to be eating lots of good stuff. So that's my uh, my very uh, two two way thought. Um, thought process as it relates to to being a vegetarian. I've met a lot of people who are vegetarians. Many of them are super healthy. They work out regularly. They they get their protein from from other sources of nutrition. They drink lots of water. They're strong. They're fit. Um, and then I've also met vegetarians who aren't. They eat a lot of crap that isn't obviously meat related, but they fill their days with stuff that you wouldn't recommend anyone to be filling their days with. So like anything, there's people who do it very well, there's people who don't do it very well. Um, but I think as long as you are consistent with with your thought process on it, if you are wanting to make some improvements to your nutrition and you are a vegetarian, there are still lots of ways you can improve it. And I think one of the, the things that we need to Keep in mind, it's just because you are a vegetarian, it doesn't mean you're healthy. So I'm going to leave it there for today. I would be really interested to hear if there are any vegetarians who are listening to this and if they agree with what I've said or if there's anything I may have left out or that I've missed and uh, get your thoughts on this too. So um, that's it for today, guys. Thanks for listening and I will talk to you on the next one. Thank you for listening. I hope you enjoyed the episode. If there is a topic you'd like us to discuss that we haven't already, please make sure you reach out in Facebook Messenger and we'll do our best to cover it in the upcoming episodes. For those of you enjoying the podcast, we'd love for you to like, subscribe and leave us a rating. It really helps us grow and spread the good word. Hoping you're all having a great day and we'll be sure to see you on the next one.